Hello, in this video I will continue to talk about the color variability, how to measure it, and how to change color variability in 3D LUT Creator. I will experiment on the photo sent by Bill Larkin. Special thanks to him. Let me remind you that color variability is a range of hues and saturations within one color. In this video, I will consider the variability of the skin color. In the previous video, we saw that variability is very important for the naturality of the photo. If you reduce the skin tone variability to zero, the photo will look sepia styled. Also, you know now that the saturation variability is much more important than the variability of the hue. For example, let's eliminate the saturation variability. The easiest way to do it is to use the saturation curve. I open the curves tab and select the sat sat curve. This curve allows you to control the output saturation based on the original image saturation. The average saturation of the skin is just about here. I fix this level and make the curve horizontal. This is the before and after. As you can see, the skin has become unnatural, and this effect is unlikely to please anyone. I turn off the curve for now. Now I will reduce the variability of the hue. This can be easily done on the AB grid. I shift two color rays between which the color of the skin is located. Now I can rotate them so the skin color becomes as close as possible to the original color. Before, after. As you can see, the global color changes are not so noticeable. So this method can be used to smooth the skin color. For example, the arm in the shade has a purple hue. After I shifted the colors together, it looks more natural. Let's consider how color variability can be measured. I will turn on the sat sat curve again. I got a sepia tone picture except for a small spot here. That is, the entire photo has the only one hue and saturation. It is very convenient to use a histogram of hues to analyze the variability. In the Analyzer window menu, I can switch the RGB histogram to the Hue histogram. It shows that all the colors are in a narrow range. If I turn off the AB grid, the number of color increases. Now they occupy a wider range. That is, the narrower the range of colors in a photograph, the less color variability. The second tool that will be useful to us is Vector Scope. But see what happens? I fix the saturation at one level. But the vector scope shows the whole spectrum of saturation. Why is this happening? I switch vector scope to 3D mode by right clicking on it. It can be seen that the color is pulled together in one line and in the shadows it converges to the neutrals. This is due to the fact that the vector scope is based on the YUV color model. In this color model, all the shadows and highlights converge to zero saturation. This is how the color distribution of the original photo looks on the 3D vector scope. And that's what it turned into. That is, it is hard to see on an ordinary vector scope whether there is variability in saturation or not. In order to get around this problem, I can do the following trick. I will create a luminance mask that will only include the midtones. This is how the mask looks. As soon as I started adjusting the mask, it is automatically turned on. I turn it off for now. The color correction is applied to the entire photo, but I can use this mask for the analyzer window. There are buttons that let you choose what the analyzer will show, the general picture, what gets inside the mask, and what is outside the mask. If I switch the analyzer to inside mode, it will show only the middle part of the tonal range. It will be better to see what happens to the saturation using vector scope. Here's how the saturation of the original photo looked. The saturation had the range from here to there. That's how it collapsed after the correction. The third option for measuring variability is the color palette. I'll take two colors from different parts of the skin, for example, arm and body, and switch the palette to the HSP mode. It can be seen that the original hues differed, but the resulting hues became the same. Initial saturation also differed, but became the same. The brightness of the image has not changed. So I reset my adjustments. Let's see how basic parameters such as saturation and white balance affect the color variability. When you increase the saturation, the hue doesn't change. Only the saturation increases. 
The color variability does not change. When the white balance temperature increases, the histogram of the hues begins to shrink. The hue of the two colors became the same. Saturation also increased, but not in proportion. The variability of the skin hues has decreased. That's what it was before, and that's what happened. That is, in the case of the skin, when you make the white balance warmer, the variability is reduced. The saturation of the skin increases. The same is true for other colors if we increase their saturation with the white balance. For example, I repainted the background in blue. Let's load this photo. Here is the blue hue on the histogram. If I start shifting the white balance toward the blue, the blue hue's variability is reduced. When the color temperature increases, the skin variability decreases. When the temperature decreases, the skin variability increases. This can be seen on the hue histogram. That is, the skin gets more different colors. Let's now look at the palette. Here, one of the colors has changed a lot in hue. Now it is closer to the pink one. And the other color has not changed so much. But the differences between the colors grow up. If I shift the white balance to the blue even more, the differences in skin tone become even more noticeable. It is visible that the hand became violet. There is the orange stripe on the stomach and so on. In this case, the photo will have to be retouched very carefully. So, let's formulate the main conclusions. The white balance increases the variability of some colors and reduces others. If you make the white balance warmer, then the variability of the skin will decrease, and the variability of the colder colors will increase. If you make the white balance cooler, then the skin's variability will increase, and the variability of cold colors will decrease. But you may say that we are changing the white balance, not the variability. Let's now see how to change specifically the variability. I go back to the original photo. To change the variability and not just the white balance or the color of the entire photo, I need to choose a color that will not change. That is, the increasing variability will mean that colors that are different from this color will differ from it even more. I'll take the color from the forehead of the girl because this area has the most even skin color. There are usually no rogue and reflexes from clothes here. I select the HSP color model in the palette. Now I will try to preserve that color. I will try to reduce the variability. To do this, I make the white balance warmer. So the variability has decreased and the saturation has increased. I will decrease the saturation to return the color to its original state. As you already know, the change in saturation does not affect the variability. The hue differs slightly, but I can correct it with the help of tint slider. I got a photo with reduced variability. It is very similar to the sepia. I send this LUT to Photoshop for now because it can be useful to us. I name it VAR minus. Now I will try to increase the variability, so I need to do the opposite. I make the white balance colder and then I increase the saturation. As you can see, it is no longer possible to change the hue by increasing the saturation, but the color has changed a lot in hue. I adjust the tint and reduce the color temperature a little. I kept the original color almost unchanged. Let's now see what happened to the whole image. The range of hues has grown greatly. This is the before and after. Also on the vector scope, you can see how the color distribution increased. It can be seen that these two colors also became more different from each other. Let's compare two versions of edit. By looking at the resulting image, the original seems similar to sepia. But as a result of increased variability, we have a lot of skin defects. Different color spots appeared, the neck became oversaturated, and so on. But if you look at the whole image, the color looks more alive. If this liveliness is important to me, then I will have to deal with these problems locally. I send the LUT to Photoshop. I turn off the layer with the LUT that reduces the variability. As you can see, the LUT makes quite soft changes, so they are quite easy to mask. 
The brightness component has not changed much, so our masks will not be very noticeable. I select the mask, take the black brush and start to remove the LUT from those places where the effect is not too beautiful. Also, the arm became too purple. Here is the before, and there is the after. There are still things left that I would like to fix. A purple tint on the chest and on the hand. I turn on the LUT, which lowers the variability. I invert the mask and erase it only where I need it, on the chest and on the hand. You can also remove this red spot on the body. I change the blend mode to color since this LUT slightly brightens the image. So here's what happened. I increased the overall variability of the picture and locally lowered it in those places where it was needed. The most pleasant is that I made it with very simple tools, saturation and white balance. The advantage of this simplicity is that any editor has these tools. For example, in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, you can increase or decrease the variability because each local brush has a white balance and saturation. For example, I'll try to make the arm less purple. I raise the temperature and lower the saturation. This is the before, and that is the after. This method is useful for retouching any redness or pallor of the skin, because it makes the colors more uniform. You will have to find the ratio of white balance and saturation for a specific picture, but still, this is the simplest method. Let's go back in 3D LUT Creator and see a few more ways to work with variability. I'll take a few color samples of different skin tones from highlights, midtones, and from shadows. Then I increase the saturation. I switch the palette display mode to HSP. If you click on the value of any sample with the shift key held down, other samples will also switch. I open the curves tab and with the help of the exact tool, I make sure that these colors do not change. I click on the original color while holding the alt key and then click without it. The color is restored to its original state. I'll do the same with midtones and shadows. Before and after. This method is more accurate than the method with a white balance because it preserves colors in highlights, midtones, and shadows. The skin on the neck is not oversaturated as it was in the previous edit, but the overall color variability has increased. If I want to decrease the variability, I reduce the saturation and then restore the color with the help of curves. Highlights, midtones, shadows. Such a correction layer will more accurately reduce the variability in shadows and highlights. As you can see, the skin practically does not change when switching before and after. You can quickly eliminate the color spots in the skin by creating such LUT, but it must be done locally. Otherwise, you will get the sepia effect as you see it now. The last thing I want to show is how to increase the variability of the saturation. As you remember, using the saturation curve, you can make the saturation constant. That is, you can completely remove the variability in saturation. That is, I go to the master section and reduce the LUT effect below zero to increase the variability. For example, like this. This is the before and after. As you can see, the skin becomes more alive again. In some areas, this effect can be reduced or completely removed, but in any case, it makes the photo better. The main conclusions that I wanted to convey by this video. If you make the color more saturated with the help of white balance or curves, its variability decreases. If you make the color less saturated with white balance or curves, its variability increases. The saturation slider has practically no effect for the variability, except for the case when your colors already become oversaturated. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.